Hi everyone, welcome to the Inventory Framework Plugin Showcase. For those of you who might be finding this video on Reddit or some other forum, this is a plugin for Unreal Engine 5 and it provides you with a framework to build your perfect inventory system. You have grids and list style containers, you have equipment, you can move things around, you can consume items, you can increase item counts, you can split items, you have infinite grids, you have infinite lists as well, which will infinitely expand. You can do inventory system things. And on top of that, it's all replicated. You can also rotate things. And this is also the first inventory system on the Unreal Engine Marketplace that has custom shaped items, such as this question mark and this crafting material. Things can even go in here if you wanted to. This video will be going through the demo and going over the highlights of the system. There's already some videos going over the more technical aspects of the system. If you are looking for how to install the plugin and how to set it up, there will be a link to the documentation in the description. But for now, let's get going. So to begin, we'll go here and get the intro. There are links to the documentation there is a link to the Discord, and this is your general intro. This project will try and showcase every feature this plugin can provide. Remember, there is also website documentation and a Discord. On the bottom left, you'll find your controls for the showcase. So if I stand out of this, you'll see at the bottom left, WASD, movement, B, open inventory, blah, blah, blah. In this room, you'll find examples of many of the features found in this plugin. There are five classes that drive the system. There are more classes and more structs, but these are the primary classes and structs. You have your data asset core item, a data asset that defines your item, uh, actor component inventory, the actor component driving all the logic, and then you have three widgets driving the user interface, the inventory item widget, the tile widget, and the container widget. There are also two structs that drive the system. There are more structs, obviously, but these are the two primary structs. There's the inventory item struct, which is a struct version of your item holding all the data that can be modified during runtime, and container settings, uh, the struct that is controlling the container. So who is this plugin for? It's meant for people who want a very performant and very powerful inventory system. The system tries to provide as many tools for your designers to create your perfect inventory system. This system does not try to replicate the behavior of any specific game. There are already some assets on the marketplace that try to replicate the mechanic of other games, but they are nowhere near as adaptable as this one. The system was designed for a open world game where the inventory system wasn't 100% certain, so it had to be designed to quickly change from one style to another. And in general, it had to be a framework so designers could create whatever they wanted once they knew what the vision was. It also had very strict performance requirements, which is why all the heavy lifting is done in C++ with an open world game in mind. It also had to be structured to handle large scale projects and potentially large teams, which is why the system uses data assets instead of data tables. The architecture was made with designers in mind, so there's a lot of blueprint exposure, but most of the functions inside the inventory component is inside of C++ for performance reasons. We can take a look at some of the functions that you'll find in the component, but there's obviously many more. There is a function library, there's a ton of absolutely ton of inventory functions. You then also have your function library. You have many more. Widgets are practically entirely blueprints. This is not a system that is meant to be only C++ or blueprints. It's supposed to be a healthy mix of the two, using all the strengths of C++ and using all the strengths of blueprints. So to begin, let's go from the left to the right. All items are data assets, but the system wraps them into a struct for gameplay 
and it also provides a override section. The data asset is for constant data that you only read. The struct is for data that can be modified during runtime. The override struct is a list of settings that you can use to modify a single item, for example, this specific actor here, to essentially create a unique item without creating a new data asset. You can add more variables to the struct, but you will have to implement the corresponding gameplay logic. So for example, here we can pick this up, cool gun, we can pick this up, and its name is cooler gun. You can see here, these are your override settings. You can obviously add more to this section, but you will have to implement the corresponding gameplay logic. One of the most exciting features that have been added since release is the tag system. All items and containers have a tag and tag value system, allowing you to add durability systems, rarity, and other systems easily. Tags can be added and removed during runtime, and tag values can be modified, added, and removed during runtime. This also means you can override tags during runtime. So we can see this data asset has a default rarity of 20, but we've overridden it in the editor to be 10. So when I pick it up, the rarity will be 10. We also don't need to add any of this while we're inside of the editor. You can see the tags and tag values are empty, but once the component is started, it will automatically add these tags. Though any tag values will get added, but they will not get overridden. So this durability tag value will get added here if it's missing, but since we've already added it, it will not do anything, allowing you to essentially override the durability value of the item. You can read more about the tag system in the documentation. One of the good things about its simplicity is that it easily supports the most basic save and load systems. And the system already comes with native save and load features for you. We can also see all of the functions that come with the tag system. As you can see, you can add, you can remove, you can set, you can get items by tags and tag values and containers by tags and tag values and you have some helper functions. The equipment system is probably one of the more powerful ones out of all the inventory systems on the marketplace right now. You can have recursive item attachments. Here we can see an actor with a backpack, which has a gun inside of it, which has a sight attached to it. And if we take a look here, we can inspect, we can see this, and then when we open it up and we remove the sight, all of the icons are updated, including the player preview. We also have these backpacks, which have spawn chances where you can randomize what items spawn. For example, this backpack here has a gun, which has a 50% spawn chance, which it has obviously failed. And then this one has a 50% chance to spawn the gun and the sight and it has succeeded in both. One of the biggest problems many inventory systems have is that there is no way to tie gameplay logic to individual items. And most of the items that allow for this kind of logic often clutter up the inventory component or the player character with a ton of functions and variables that make working in those classes an awful experience. And it also complicates working in larger teams. The item driver system is made up from two classes, the U object, which holds the data, and then an actor component that is attached to the owning actor of said item to then execute your gameplay logic. This also means you get reusable components that you can arbitrarily add and remove from the data assets. This also has the amazing benefit of keeping all of your functions and variables in places where they make sense. Your player character shouldn't have to store functions and data to consume an item which just leads to classes becoming bloated with irrelevant stuff inside of it. For example, if we take a look at the Apple item, we have a consumable item driver here. We can play an animation. We can say what kind of networking method we want to use. If we want it to be server or client or both. If we want it to be associated to per actor, per use or custom for the construction policy. We can also enable the driver to follow the item wherever it goes. So if the player drops the item while a driver is active, that driver will then attach to the newly spawned actor. If we take a look at the objects, we can add any variables to here. For example, 
uh, health to restore. We can add that to our consume settings, compile, and now that setting will be added over here. In the item driver, you can then retrieve this variable and execute your gameplay logic in here. You can also see now all of your functions that are related to this specific driver are contained inside of here instead of bloating up your player character. Objects also don't need to have a driver associated with them. There are pure objects which can contain just data. For example, this pricing object doesn't have any driver associated with it. It just contains data. So you don't need to go into C++ to add variables. And this also means you can add variables to specific assets instead of specific categories. Most importantly, these drivers do not need an existing actor to exist in the world to function. For example, this note and this uh, chest, this note does not need a physical actor representation of itself in the world. It will get whatever owner owns the inventory component, owns this item, and attach the driver onto that actor, which means way fewer actors in your world and you'll gain more performance. You may have noticed during the equipment system that we have item icon generation. This system provides a powerful preview system that allows you to not just inspect items, but also generate item icons. This is not just limited to items. This also works on all actors, like the player character. There is no special actor hierarchy setup required. The only requirement is an actor reference. You also get some debugging features while inside of the editor. You can also save the icon to disk, and you can also add it to the data assets. You can also just save these settings directly to the data assets from the editor. You also have a system to preview how the item widget will look once it is generated in game using the item inspection settings. Just like I covered earlier, the system uses data assets to manage its items. This means no data tables, which are a lot more comfortable for teams and especially source control. It also provides better ways to find out what actors are referencing a specific item, whereas with data tables, it's virtually impossible to find out what actors are referencing a specific row. These data assets can have children, helping with categorizing items, and many developer settings allow you to keep things even more organized. What many people also don't realize is you can di modify data assets during runtime. So you can change this, and now you can see new gun, you can then change it to cool gun back. And the name will update. This can help greatly when you are probably very deep into a play, play session or a quality control session, and you need to test something real quick without restarting the entire session. There are some developer tools. The inventory helper tool allows designers to more easily modify containers and provides them with a near one-to-one -one view of a container or item while inside the editor. For example, for example, if we open up the inventory helper, we can see what is inside of this container straight from in here. We can move things around, we can rotate, we can change the data assets, we can move things around, you can enable or disable item collision temporarily, you can move things into the void section here, you can have your entire database. You can filter things. You can filter things by tag. You can filter things by tag values. In general, this provides you with a much better workflow and much better developer experience than trying to work with the raw item struct. There's also the item editor, which provides you with a better experience to work with your data assets than trying to use the content browser and the data asset window. For example, we can click on the cool gun, we can go into the editor, and we can now find a toolbox which has a bunch of developer tools. And these are all UMG widgets, so you can easily add tools in here without going into select. You can also customize these tools. For example, the shape editor requires a custom shape object, which the crafting material does. And now we can see we can edit the shape of the item 
And then once we go in game, we can see we have modified the shape of the item. You can also resize things. And just like in the inventory helper, you can filter things by tags. You can filter things by category and so forth. Players can put items into tests with all the interactions automatically replicated. Designers can also use the inventory helper to eas more easily design containers, just like I showed earlier. This test is utilizing infinite directions, just like I showed at the beginning. And this test is utilizing hidden slots to have a custom shaped container, just like how we can have sh custom shaped items. We can also have custom shaped containers. Hidden slots is not a hidden slot system specifically. It is a tiled tag system. So you can see here, here are all the tags that are, uh, here are all the tiles that are hidden. And we've just added a tag. I have then added the corresponding logic to retrieve this tag and hide the widget tile if it has this tag. You can, of course, expand this. For example, locked tiles or a level required for a specific tile to be unlocked. Of course, we have vendors. You have full control over how vendor interactions are handled. This includes how their wallets, if any, are handled all inside blueprints. There's no need to modify any C++ files to decide how you want your vendors to work. For example, here we have a simple vendor. He will just give you currency if you sell him items. And of course, you can buy things from him. You have an invisible wallet. So this is just a value. There's no container or anything with any currency in it. And of course, you can sell and buy things. And here you have a visible wallet. So you can see he has 20 money on him. We can sell him. It deducts. It grants us. You, of course, have the documentation up there, just like how you have the documentation for many, many other things. That's it for today. I hope you like what you saw, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.